Hello everyone, it's the Centralized Dave and welcome back to my rebranded channel. I'm here with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. And we're back to, uh, to our podcast that we do every other week. Today we're gonna be a little bit shorter and for the next time we also want to shorten it even further to about 30 minutes. So uh, let's start with the updates. Curtis, would you like to start with Bitcoin? Start with Bitcoin. Okay, I think this is S&P. There we go. So we just had a, the last two hours, we had a, a pump up a little bit. Um, it was falling. Um, it looked like it was looking very bearish. It was falling around 28,000, 28.5 for uh, about a day and a half over the weekend. And then we just had a pump up to 30,700. Uh, but overall, you could say we're still in a, a channel somewhere between 28,031. Or 33, um, maybe. Uh, volume was pretty low on the weekend, so I thought it was going to sell off further, but we had a pump. It could be just whales trading. Overall, yeah, we seem to be in a, a, still in a, quite a, a bearish. On-chain data is not bad, but it was also not bad when we had the sell-off. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that changes the thesis. So that, that's Bitcoin. I, I guess in, we could look at the S&P and I can tie it together. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday last week, you see, I think that's three daily green candles. Mm -hmm. And what you had was you had a very unusual situation. You had three days where 80% of the stocks rose, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you had a broad rally, 80% of stocks went up consecutively Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's only happened a few times in the last 30 years. And obviously it's a fairly bullish uh, signal. I mean, it's just one of many, it could be have no meaning, but it does, it's a significant uh, outcome, but that's the SMP. Okay, um, so I guess it's my turn. Do you think I should start with a good news or with a bad news? <laughs> Up to you, bad news. Okay. I'll start with the bad news. The bad news, the worst news is that the, the over leveraging is just so critical that I just, uh, it keeps me awake at night actually. And over the past few days, we had more long leverage coming. At the moment, it's a mixture of, uh, of uh, long and short. Of course, the long is dominating, it's, the, it's predominantly opened, it's the long. But there was some short leverage opened, um, uh, you know, in those days when we were shorting uh, around the mid of March. That the fact that we didn't wipe the leverage when we went to 25k, 25 point something k, the, that fact is actually what's, what's uh, keeping me awake at night. Uh, on the last podcast, um, um, we were already down, I believe. And uh, yeah, I also drew this circle here, showing that this is not where it's going to go at the moment, because that's what people were, t were, were talking about on Twitter, that that's where we're going to go now. I don't think we're going to revisit this circle, at not, not at least this month. So let's see. Okay. Uh, I mean, in June, uh, it's still May. You don't think we'll rally there? I don't think in June it's going to happen. No, no. The leverage really keeps me awake at night and that we didn't wipe it here. It also didn't really, wipe it. Okay. Yeah. We didn't right. wipe it. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. You know, the stop losses and margin calls are below this. So yeah. once we go like lower, it's going to be even very dramatic. Actually, then it's not going to stop most likely around 20 K. Right. For what it's worth, I, I did have a small, again, I have a huddle position, which is a long-term hold. And I do have a trading position with my trading position. I was around 29. I took some coins off. So I was hoping mm -hmm. it went lower. Uh, uh, from okay. 29k and i'm uh just if for what it's worth as a trader uh, i'm hoping we we go lower in the very short term <laughs> for personally self uh, uh okay. exclusively selfish reasons um <laughs> okay hoping it tests the 200 week moving average 200 week moving average is below what i think is the barrier of stop losses and margin calls or around right. that I don't think that when it's going to go there, it, it's very unlikely that it's going to stop just there and bounce. No, right. What we're going to have is something like a Corona bottom then, where we actually went below, although we, we closed weekly on it, but right. we wicked below that. Again, and, it, during the week, it, it wicks below, but it closes at or above the line. Yeah. Or maybe on the line, something like yes. that. It went lower there. Yeah. But that clearly, the very, you know, so 10 in 10 days, it was off of it, but still relatively, that's a touch, isn't it? I mean, um, that it goes around, maybe wicks down to 20 or 18 
and then maybe closes around 20 or 22 and then that's the bottom that's one one idea out there uh the good news is that the sentiment is so bearish like uh, you know, we are still all the time like in the extreme like this is yeah. a pretty uh, intense long period around 10 extreme extreme fears yeah. it's comparable period to either the corona bottom and either to the um 2018 bottom actually yeah. it's comparable to that and also the stocks have also very bearish uh yeah. bearish sentiment Same types at the of charts in stocks also, also yeah. everybody that i know and now even you are in, uh, among those people because you just told me that you took a little bit off yeah, I said that last... i know it's funny when you're a hodler um and when like through 2017 18 is i just held my coins forever i never sold and i just mm -hmm. held them for three years and when you come up to that again even though you're very bullish i think a lot of hodlers are thinking yes i'm bullish but i want to add to my stack by selling and rebuying lower um yeah so that you even have hodlers selling in that scenario or that psychology because carrying your coins through four years or three years of a bear market is very exhausting and so i have to admit i'm in that camp uh my point there is that even the people that are very bullish may be going short in the short term yes um, and that's very good news actually that's yeah. one of the best news that i everybody that i know is kind of selling or just uh like like here uh at the end of april that like people were kind of just all in Right. And right now, people are like 50% in only because they've taken in this class that they've taken 50% off. And like some people do it because they have open leverage and they have to just uh, yeah. avoid of being wiped out completely. Yeah. And some people just uh, just sell because they just realize that they were wrong. It's just very, it's generally, that's generally actually marks the bottom when you see this kind of attitude that people who have been stubbornly saying bull run, bull run, bull run. There have been people, and that's most of them. Most of the people have been all, all the time saying yeah. "buran, buran, buran" for the past year or so, and today right. they are selling. So that's generally. But it makes sense that the they were market. saying that. It does make sense. It was a very logical conclusion that it was we were still in a bull run, um, uh, in many senses. And then, of course, the people in in Bitcoin are, that are pro Bitcoin are just as biased as everyone else, right? And um, and they get in a reality bubble of people telling this the same thing, of course. Um, but I think, yeah, 40K, I think you could have argued we were still, uh, you know, the chart, uh, we hadn't had a blow off top. The on-chain data was good. Uh, and then, you know, people that like Bitcoin like Bitcoin. And so there is a bias, perhaps. So that was the that was the best news. And now you compared it to the S&P 500. Well, S&P 500 today, it looks like they want to open even higher, like yeah. un unbelievably. It looks like they want to open around 4,190, which is like pretty interesting. And yeah. uh, the month candle is about to be as well done. If that happens, the monthly candle is going to be with a huge tail down. And that's also looks pretty bullish, actually. Um, yeah. Um, so it also in 2000, in the dot-com bubble crash, you we seen these tail downs and then there was some kind of a couple of months of the leak a local rebound or so so that's right. what in my opinion could be happening i've had this uh, red circle here for uh, like uh, a month or so i believe I, I drew this red circle when we were still here so we, we it wasn't even sure that we were gonna go to the new low so yeah. this circle was still i was in blind here and the circle well on daily <laughs> just we closed so much below that on weekly we also closed below that although yeah there seems to be some kind of a bounce but my point is that i don't believe that the stocks are done uh i don't believe that at all um you don't think they're done meaning it's gonna fall yeah yeah i don't think this was the bottom for like uh for like this year well what i was gonna ask you is if you think stocks are rallying i know this is totally difficult but do you think bitcoin will correlate and rally with them Let's say a scenario uh, where we get I don't think at the moment we get a no. two week a two week rally in stocks. Do you think Bitcoin will follow? Two week rally? No, I don't think it will follow because too many people expect some kind of a relief rally. No, I don't think Bitcoin will follow in this few upcoming weeks. That not that much at least. Maybe a little bit, but maybe thirty three k or so. I don't think that the stocks are done uh, uh, going down. And but uh, be you know, there is no rush. There is no rush at all. 
it can take months before the stocks revisit new bottoms, in my opinion. Right, so that was S&P 500 and Bitcoin. So do we want to have a quick look on gold? Sure. That's the gold. Um, my trade is on. Let's see if it's any worth. <laughs> I'm long gold now, hypothetically, <laughs> because my right. red line was hit. So there is not much to say there because it's a slow chart. DXY, would you like to comment on DXY, Curtis? Um, yeah, it pull back. Makes sense. It would pull back a bit. Um, the ten-year U.S. Treasury fell from three percent down to about two point seven five. Right, so that's part of that. Uh, for whatever reason, the ten-year is falling, even though apparently interest rates are rising. That's weird, uh, and that's partly why the market rallied. Is is there? The, I'll talk about that later, but um, for some year reason, the 10 year has has pulled back slightly. Um, well, stocks are rising, uh, which inverts uh, correlates inversely to DXY. Um, I don't know why else hard to know. It could be just a technical retracement. Mm -hmm. When you when we look at monthly. Yeah, I have the few lines, like a final resistances that mustn't be broken, at least not on right. monthly. Right. And the first was not even touched. So that was pretty interesting that it didn't go. Although, yeah, OK, maybe, maybe yes, it, it actually touched the weeks here. 105. Yeah, right. It's not far anyway. So, yeah, I honestly believe that like this year, the DXY will reach the, the top and will never go higher ever. Even though I I understand, I agree with the point that this is the index versus other fiat currencies and that the uh, US dollar can still go down versus the services and goods, but still can go high here versus yeah. other fiat currencies because they can go even lower. So, but just looking at the chart, yes, this is what my logic, my technical logic tells me that this is where it's going to be the, the top, some uh, one of these two lines. Right. That was the XY. And now I think we are done. Maybe quick look at Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Very quick look at Ethereum. So yeah, uh, uh, altcoins are panicking. Altcoins yeah. like Ethereum was literally like touching the lows, the summer lows. It's, it's like very uh, kind of unbelievable that the same point holds again. Like, but yeah, it's also it's also a little bit understandable because there was lots of liquidity because uh, because Ethereum was to the new all time high as well, and then with, when it comes back to uh, seventeen hundred, it's not going to be get broken that easily, and especially not when the merge is due. The merge is due. The last the last news was August actually. Vitalik even talked about August. It passed August. Before, yeah. So that's not that far ahead actually. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's if that is confirmed, if that doesn't get delayed, then seventeen hundred might even hold again, unbelievably, like right. absolutely unbelievably. Like given how the last summer we touched it like four times, mm -hmm. and we didn't break it, and it looks like it might actually something similar happen. Yeah. Um. So that was Ethereum. Now. Uh, maybe we can progress to your. Sure. So, um, yeah. So I just mentioned um, you can look at the uh, 10 year yield. The top. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is what I was saying about maybe why DXY was falling. So this is the um, US 10 year Treasury yield. You can see it, it. It's been rising quite a bit since last year. We peaked at around 3.1. 3.2%, but we recently just had a fallback to 2.75, which is kind of strange in the sense that um, if the Fed is raising rates, um, there should be a, a higher uh, rate offered on the 10 year. So it should rise as well. Um, and there was a reverse here. So what does that mean? It could be uh, just a glitch, or it could mean that some um, investors maybe think the Fed is not going to raise as aggressively as they said they would. Um, and this this uh, little pivot here could explain some of the stock market strength in the last few days as well, um, that uh, different market players 
are coming up with different theses about how aggressive the Fed will be. And obviously, they, they sort of look at each other out of the corner of the eye, right? People buying bonds are looking at people buying stocks and vice versa. So um, it's interesting that it pulled back a bit. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at my next graph. Federal Reserves. Okay, so this is the federal funds effective rate. So this is a percentage on the left, and we go from 1955 up to the present. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a few things. So you'll see, you'll see these peaks, right? You'll see 1970 went up and down, 1975 up and down, mm -hmm. 1980 up and down, 1988 up and down, 2000 up back down, 2008. These peaks are representing um, bull and bear waves in the stock market or in the economy, let's say. So mm -hmm. um, if you look at, let's say 2000, uh, the 2000 mark or 2001, what you're seeing there is you're seeing the dot-com crash where you had okay. uh, a That's massive good. crash in stocks. Um, the economy was related to that crash directly, indirectly, in the sense that the, the Fed probably saw a uh, weakness in the economy. Again, we're talking about 2001. Uh, if you go closer okay. to the 2000 yeah. with your cursor right mm -hmm. there. So the sell-off is, is the Fed cut their, uh, the Fed cutting rates to support the economy, support jobs, et cetera. Um, 2005 up to 2007, they raised rates again. And then you had the 2008 uh, global financial crisis and they cut rates down to zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then as you can see from 2015 to 2020, they tried to raise rates again. And in 2018, they had to drop them down to zero again. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then most recently, we're only at 0.75 or whatever. So we're just a little tail yeah, off the yeah. bottom, right? Which is tough. <laughs> so when, when you talk about wow. the Fed raising rates, it's kind of funny because historically, they, they really haven't, right? It's almost at zero. But the waves will show you that each time they cut rates, they raise them to a new lower level. Do you see how it's lo getting lower each time? Yeah, it seems to be the pattern for the past right? 50 years. And so years. why is that useful? So, well, it explains that they probably aren't going to raise rates that much because they probably can't, right? They can still raise it to like 1.5%. But that's, yeah, but the market's pricing them raising it to 3 or 4% in my mind. Do um, you think so? Yeah, 1.5. So. Yeah, they can raise it to 1.5 if that's the pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to ask yourself, why is that pattern happening, that lower highs? And then is that pattern going to continue? And then what does that mean for rates? Okay. And of course, as global debt rises, governments print more money. There's more debt land out. They're less able to raise rates to, let's say, 7 to 10% because they would crash all that debt. They would have defaults. So the, the guys that are saying that the Fed cannot raise rates much more are looking mm -hmm. at this chart and saying, look, the pattern is each time it goes down, it rises less and it goes down further and it rises less, it goes down further, it rises less, which would suggest maybe a, a 2%, maybe a 3%, but um, somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5 seems to be where the chart's going. Um, could they raise rates to three or four or five percent? Yes, but the trend is against that. Right? If the trend uh, sustains, if it doesn't yes. reverse, because it could as yeah. well, if you saw this chart, it could as well amplify that there could be some kind of a rebound. And that yeah, but look how long that chart goes back, 1980. That's a long yes, chart. It's now the pattern from 1980. And then again, it's not just the chart, David. It's why we know why that's happening because the money printing and the debt is so high. There's a reason for that that's very strong. And that is accelerated. Mm -hmm. So they, they printed $2 trillion in the last two years. So the thesis behind why this ha is happening is also continuing. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to say what's different this time and why are they, would they be able to raise rates uh, and not crash the global economy? We're not talking about a recession. We're talking about massive global defaults, even sovereign defaults, governments failing. And so uh, this chart just gives some insight that they're maybe not, they're not, they're talking about raising rates and they will raise rates, but how far is still not determined. And I think it's a useful backdrop to your thesis, mm -hmm. okay? Or a thesis, yeah. 
going to my next one, it's it's sort of the key chart um, on monthly uh, headline inflation. We talked about this last session. So in mm -hmm. March, you hit that top of 8.5. This is headline inflation in the US. You hit 8.5% in March. And then in April, it dropped a little bit, but not much. The question is, uh, what will the print be for May? Will it be below 8.3% or above? And that's a massive question. Yeah. Um, uh, June 10th is when the report comes out, I believe. You'll get that okay. announced so that's, in about... That could be a significant yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so June 10th. Um, now, why is this important? If we can see infl uh, headline inflation has peaked and is falling, what it does is it gives the Fed an excuse to not raise rates as aggressively as they promised. Mm -hmm. They might say, look, we've Fair had enough. some job losses. Inflation is falling. We did our job. So we're only going to raise uh, 0.5 and then 0.25, and then we're going to take a pause. And that's that's the bull argument on stocks rallying uh, in the next two to three weeks would be something like that. Of course, if inflation comes in higher, it's very bad for stocks and you'd likely have a sell-off because the Fed has promised to tame inflation. And if we're getting that headline above 8% consistently, uh, they're gonna have to keep raising rates. And uh, it's very disastrous for stocks in the short term. So June 10th is D-Day, it's a very important day. I think the market is kind of on the fence. Um, a lot of people are bearish. A lot of analysts are yeah. talking about recession. Oh, yes. But more yeah. important in recession, if we're talking about stocks, what is important is the Fed rate, because that is the risk on risk off sort of toggle that they have. And um, obviously, May, June, July, a falling headline, if it's consistently falling, later in the year, the Fed might say, okay, we're just going to take a break. We're not going to tighten until next year. And then you would see stocks rally. Uh, Bitcoin might get a bid at that time. Who knows? Yep. Okay, okay. so that's mostly my charts. Um, we could look at Tesla if you're interested. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, let's go. Um, we have a very small unofficial bet running on. Uh, that was from this red circle. Uh, it was literally sideways. Uh, this red circle was done the last podcast. So yeah. it was literally, we are at the same, very same yeah. spot. Yeah and i persistently i am very you were sure. saying around the 447 there yeah i'm pretty sure it's gonna go down there yeah but there right. is time no rush no it doesn't have right. to be june it doesn't have to be july it doesn't have to it's be true. august it's, it's true so there's no rush it's a great it's a great buy right now not financial advice um yeah. 447 is spectacular <laughs> At 447, I think their PE would fall into like under 60 or something amazing. It would be just such an amazing buy, considering they're growing at about 80% a year. Well, the demands, mm -hmm. sales are demand growing at 50%, and then they had a big revenue beat as well. So the buy of the century, if we get down that low. Um, I bought a little bit at the 700 range, the 730, mm -hmm. and okay. uh, I would even buy more at this range. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean, being patient is a good idea. Let's look at uh, the crash in 2008. If you're talking about, you were saying that um, it could happen later in the year. Let's look at 2008. I'll leave because it remember the COVID, the 2020 COVID was a sharp sell off and it bounced back. Let's mm -hmm. look at the timeline. When did the when did the 2008 crash start to sell off? When was the peak there? It was actually September. even before 2008. It was yeah, October started to roll 2007. Over. Yeah, that so. was the peak. Uh, September 2008 was the official crash date. That's when Lehman Brothers declared insolvency. So literally one year of so slow decline. Was that one, one year, full year? Yeah. It was yeah. one year of slow decline and then a couple of months of very sharp. How decline. long was it to the bottom? Uh, March 2009. So literally half a year. Well, so, a little bit more than half a year. Six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Clearly, this is the worst case scenario of what we'd be facing now. I don't believe mm -hmm. we'll be anywhere near this bad just because that was a credit freeze. That was bank failure. That was global financial failure all over the world. Um, it could happen now. To predict that would be a long shot right now. We're not going to have that bad, but I think it is useful. You're, I mean, if you're saying 
these things can stretch out. This would confirm yep. that thesis. Um, although this is absolutely an outlier. Um, most stock crashes are not this long. They don't stretch out for as long um, and they don't fall as deep. Uh, so um, recessions can last 18 months, uh, but um, this is an exceptional sell-off. Let's gonna check uh, the 2000, 2000 the dot-com bubble crash. Sure. So there we had that we had maybe two or three more dramatic but not as dramatic drops as 2009. A bit more stretched out, yeah. It was also like the peak was either March 2000 or August 2000, so like okay mid 2000 and the bot, there was like yeah. triple bot, was yeah. like mid 2002, so again it was two, two years. years. Yeah. That's but, longer than yeah. I remember it to being. I don't remember it being that long. Yeah. So, uh, again, the dot com, that is I mean, if you compare that to now, the situations, um, you know, the difference between tech stocks now and tech stocks then would be was though tech stocks then had no proven market or business, right? They literally, they're more like altcoins now. In other words, they have no actual value being created yet. And so you had that sell-off. You had a lot of just URL websites uh, making promises. Um, tech now uh, is very different, right? These companies, they're selling off 80%, but they're actually producing revenue. Like something like Teladoc, I mean, it's 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 generating cash. It, you can't really compare that to a dot-com. Um, but I think you've made a good point here that it it can stretch out longer than you think. And mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got a two-year example there, and you've got an 18-month example with Lehman. Mm -hmm. uh, the great financial crisis. So um, two examples that we could be in for lower lows. Um, we're hearing a lot of bearish talk in the market. Yeah, Let's and that's why. Let's go back to the current now. Let's yeah. go back to the current. Um, so. Um, yeah, and I'm going to show uh, the fear and greed index for the stocks. We are right now also in extreme fear, obviously. We yeah. have been around seven, actually. May the 12th was the seven. Wow, that's a all-time low. And that's low. also pretty. Oh, it, only no, over the past year, year. Over the past year, but it's. Can you see uh, that? Move that further back. Can you move it back like a couple of years? Uh, I'm sure there are some uh, some tools for that, but not only with, or not on this website, obviously, because there is not button. My point is that the best news of the current situation is that the, the bearishness is pretty extreme, and everybody's talking about it. So. It makes it usually very hard for the markets to, at the moment, go lower. But yeah, you have you the recession still hasn't hit. We could be in it already, and it maybe the data just catches up. Mm -hmm. People are talking about recession. Um, people are talking about the stock, uh, the real estate market crashing. People are talking about the Fed raising rates aggressively. There's a lot of talk. Some of that data has not con been confirmed yet. Um, anecdotally, guys like Kevin Leary are saying they have. Com they have companies, uh, say 50 to 100 companies they have knowledge about, and they're 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 making a lot of money. They're busy, so um, there is a there is some counter data that's saying that uh, we may not go into a recession. Um, but yeah, I would this say is the just a recession scare. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, it's uh, so a recession scare. We may not go into a recession. Your point. We, we may already be in it and be coming out of it because there is data lags. You would not want to put too much risk on the table um, at the moment. I think you need to be hedged somewhat. So um, that would be all for today's podcast, I believe. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's wrap this up. Um, what about the next podcast? Would you like to highlight perhaps that? So June 10th is that big day I talked about, right? Where they're going to come out. June um, 10th. So it might be good to... Uh, maybe the day after or um... the day after is Saturday 11th of June okay would you like to do it on Saturday uh, I, I, yeah, yeah I'm not free you. on Saturday I think we're gonna okay. have to postpone to the uh, it's, it's it's literally two weeks from now the 13th of June let's just do the 13th then that'll be so that'll be a crazy will be week past the day I think that'll, that'll be, be a be crashing week day. or a rallying week very clearly it'll be I don't think it'll be a boring week hmm Let's see if that comes true. Although, yeah, I agree that there is a it's a major event. 
So we're definitely looking forward to what's gonna happen and we will bring you the best out of it.